Last week, Pan and Coke uploaded a near 4 hour long documentary about the different types of invisible walls in Super Mario 64, full with explanations and examples of how each one works. And by invisible wall, we don't mean the level boundaries here. We're talking about the ones inside the level that catch you off guard out of nowhere. I'm sure if you've ever beaten Mario 64, you've run into a few invisible walls. And if you've ever watched a Mario 64 speedrunner, you've probably seen them bonk. Invisible wall! These can be really annoying to encounter. And seeing his video made me realize that we in the modding scene have been fighting against these invisible walls for over a decade now. So let's talk about what we do on the modding side to avoid them. I won't be as elaborate as Panin in explaining how invisible walls work, but I'll give you a short recap when appropriate. There are two main types of invisible walls we care about. Invisible walls from exposed ceilings and invisible walls from out of bounds areas. You may think avoiding them is as simple as just don't expose the ceiling or just don't make out of bounds areas, but I assure you. The inner mathematics of Mario 64 make this quite the task, which is why there are so many invisible walls in Mario 64 levels and Mario 64 mods. And the first big problem is that ceilings go on forever if a floor doesn't cancel them. This means a ceiling can hit you even if you are way above it. This alone wouldn't be an issue, but exposed ceilings can happen all the time. The most common ones in Mario 64 and on our mods are from edge vertices and overshadowed floors. Take a look at these two hills. Both of their geometries would look fine at first glance, but it turns out some ceilings bleed through the floor and hit Mario here. As you can see, it's not very intuitive when an invisible wall appears and it can often be difficult to prevent. Misaligned edges come from the fact that Mario 64's collision vertices are all rounded to a whole number. This means that if you draw a line that isn't axis aligned like this, the ceiling can poke out a few coordinates and create thin invisible walls in this triangular block. Though, if it is axis aligned, there will never be an invisible wall, because the rounding won't move the vertex. The most obvious and simple fix here is something I've implemented a long time ago, which is to make ceilings cut at their highest vertex. This worked well enough as it cut the ceiling short. An even better fix is to cut a ceiling's hitbox where the ceiling ends. The most obvious thing ever. This was a patch frame perfection made a while ago. Why would the ceiling even be infinitely high whenever they aren't cancelled by a floor? That is weird, right? The reason is, when Mario checks for ceilings, he doesn't check for the lowest ceiling above him. He checks for the lowest ceiling above the floor that he is above. This means that if you're all the way up here, the raycast secretly starts here. Which means the game will find the ceiling down here as Mario's current ceiling. Since the game wants Mario to never be inside the ceiling, and Mario is roughly 150 coordinates high, the game then determines that there is some huge negative amount of space between the floor and Mario's current ceiling, and thus determines that Mario should not be allowed to move forward. I have no explanation for why they did it this way, because it just costs more performance, and it is kind of counterintuitive, and it introduces a lot of invisible walls. But by just starting the raycast and Mario's location, you get rid of all the exposed ceiling invisible walls, and also get a minor performance boost. Also, while we are at it, the overshadowed floor bug is fixed as well. And this was a programming bug that would find the floor whose first vertex was the highest, rather than the floor that is actually below Mario. This bug is super easy to run into when making mods, but it also appears in the original game a few times. I'm sure the developers were aware of the square and actively worked around it when they made their levels. The simplistic geometry of Mario 64 made encountering this bug pretty rare, but there is a few places where you can find it. The easiest being here in Lethal Lava Land. Frames fix alone fixes about half of the invisible walls already in Mario 64. And I'm sure people would love a patch of Mario 64 that does nothing but remove those. So someone go and get on that. Either way, this still leaves out of bounds invisible walls, so let's see what we can do here. The misaligned edge vertices that cause exposed ceilings will still cause exposed out of bounds sections. So we need to be extra careful on levels that don't have a death floor. Unfortunately, there is no smart code solution here. 
We have no easy and cheap way to discern the difference between a genuine level bound and a modeling error like this. Of course, the easiest possible fix is to just add an extra vertex here in the collision map and align it. This will cause both vertices to be rounded to the same unit and cause the exposed area to be removed. Unfortunately, extra vertices means extra RAM used and extra performance used, so this solution is not ideal. What we can do instead is overflooring, where we move the floor just one or two units too far. This won't introduce any performance penalty and it lets us avoid the invisible wall. There's another 3D modeling error that is very easily made and that is corner misalignments. Sometimes you may end up accidentally introducing an actual hole in the level geometry. This happens in Mario 64 in a few places. The best solution here, of course, is to just not make holes like this in your level. Unfortunately, that is a lot easier said than done. Fortunately, there's a super easy fix to this, and it's to simply merge vertices by distance in Blender. This will find any obvious hole. And honestly, if any such small geometry exists in your collision map, it's most likely safe to remove it anyway. Collision models really don't need to be that accurate anyway. In most modern games, they just make a very inaccurate convex hole. And just look at how inaccurate collision maps are in other games. Okay, maybe that is a little bit too inaccurate. Moving on. So with these fixes, if we never mess up ever, we will fix all the invisible walls. But of course, that is not realistic. So we have a few more tricks up our sleeves. The first is that I've switched to a custom step function. If you've ever watched a Pan & Co video, you know that Mario moves in quarter steps. I've replaced this with a custom step function where Mario moves just one step and then error corrects. This means that there's just one fourth the opportunity to hit an invisible wall. Plus, if you hit an out of bounds invisible wall, all that would happen is that your step becomes 1.5% short. You wouldn't actually bonk on it. 1.5% is also the max error that this new step function has, compared to the vanilla game's 25%. It's also about three and a half times faster than Vanilla Mario 64's collision due to some cool tricks, and it has a bunch of other cool features to make movement less jank. I have a short clip on my second channel. If you want to see more about this, I will link it in the description. But that is still not enough. We've only mitigated it in the previous step. We need to be absolutely sure that there are no invisible walls. So we have another line of defense. Debugging. If you've watched Pennant's video, you've seen him visualize the invisible walls. I couldn't get my hands on the specific code he used, but I've taken inspiration from that and I wrote a quick and dirty invisible wall finder. This code lets me know where the nearest invisible wall is and it makes it pretty easy to track down any holes that I may otherwise miss. I can then use all our modern knowledge to simply fix the geometry and make the invisible wall disappear. I tried this code just this week and it's already helped me find two invisible walls that are so small that with my new step function, I didn't even manage to bump into those yet. But I know that they're there, theoretically. I've honestly not bumped an invisible wall for the last six months in my game, so I wasn't exactly desperate for this. But hey, it's still good to have an extra layer of protection. This gives us a double safety net against invisible walls. And for a triple layer, we still have beta testing before the final release of this game. So hopefully you can experience the final release of this game without any invisible walls. I hope you enjoyed this. Shoutouts to all my Patreons. Your support is very appreciated. If you want to support my channel and modding and appear in the credits here, check out my Patreon. I'm gonna do my best to deliver the best products I can. Of course, everything I release will always be free, so don't worry about that part. And I'll see you in the next video. See ya!